Hi, everyone. My name is Justin Curryloo. Thank you very much for coming to today's App Exchange session for small and medium business. Um, I am your session host, Justin Curryloo. I'm a solution engineer specializing uh, specifically in the growth of small and medium businesses. So I've been at Salesforce for about three years, um, had the opportunity to work with some of our fastest growing uh, customers and um, World Waterworks, one of them, which you'll be hearing a little bit about later today as we go through the session. And we're gonna focus today on how you can use apps to help grow your business as well. So uh, we're gonna start off um, real quick with our safe harbor slide. Everybody loves our safe harbor slide. I don't know, I love it too. So um, basically, if we're, there's a lot of things that we may talk about that are forward, uh, there are forward statements. Um, again, please just make any purchasing decisions uh, on currently available technology. So um, a real quick agenda of what we're gonna go over in the next 40 minutes. Uh, first, what is the app exchange? And, by a show of hands, how many of you guys are App Exchange users today? Wonderful. So about half of the room. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna do a, a quick introduction just to uh, talk about how you may not know of how you could find those uh, find apps through things like filters and collections today. And then we're also gonna talk about some of the different types of apps. We're gonna get into a demonstration of one of our apps, um, and then finally get into um, one of our customers here with us today, World Waterworks, and how they use the App Exchange. Uh, to grow their business, and they've grown pretty significantly since they've started with us. And then finally, we're gonna have Q&A at the end, so please do think of questions as we go through, so you can ask uh, these guys some of the questions you have. So first of all, what is the App Exchange? The App Exchange you can think of um, a lot like uh, the App Store for your iPhone, but for Salesforce. So if you have your iPhone and you, know, you think you could really use a good contacts uh, manager, you could use a good task list, you might go out there and find something like Salesforce One or another app that you could download. The same thing is for Salesforce. So you know, maybe you want a, a project management application or something to help manage invoices or maybe even a full ERP. There's plenty of different types of apps out here. There's actually around 2,850 apps last time I checked and over three million installs. So a lot of people are getting some, a, a lot of really good use out of this and if you haven't started using the apps right now, you're definitely missing out uh, on, on a large part of what Salesforce brings as value. So um, just a real quick overview of the types of, of apps that, that we have out here. Um, there's apps for every department you can think of. Sales and service, obviously going to be one of the ones that have most apps out there, but it goes way beyond that. Of course, marketing, uh, you'd be surprised there's a lot of HR apps out there. Um, I actually just worked with this another small business in Chicago that's using an HR app for an in employee intranet and they're actually treating their employees like customers. And then also um, finance and IT admin. So there's plenty of apps to go around. Um, so if we're classifying these by two different types of classifications. Um, there's free apps. Uh, these are often made by Salesforce or other third parties like those partners that you're seeing out on the campground. Uh, and then there's paid apps. These can range from subscription to one-time fees. Um, you know, they, there's, they're really small sometimes, maybe $1 a month, um, all the way up to full ERP applications. So there's a, a large range of different types of apps you could install, but it's split about right down the middle. It's about half, half paid, half free, as you can see by the Wave dashboard that I pulled in the bottom left. Um, additionally, on the right-hand side, you'll see there's a different classification between native apps and non-native apps. So uh, when, you th when we think of a native app, we're talking about uh, pre-built functionality that's been customized using Salesforce. So you could think of it as creating fields in Salesforce, creating workflow around those fields. It's like making the, taking these customizations that are already there in Salesforce, packaging it up into an app, and making it available for you. Um, those take, so those take advantage of the same things like Salesforce dashboards and reports, for example. Then we get to non-native apps. Non-native native apps are also really important, uh, but they serve a different function. These are typically integrations with something like QuickBooks. DB Sync is a popular app for integrating QuickBooks. Um, sometimes they're external integrations for telephony, so you can actually have screen pops on your, um, when, when somebody calls in to help reduce handle time. Or middleware, there's a lot of, there's a lot of different types of non-native non -native apps out there too. But the real big thing the, that we see small businesses using apps for is to keep focusing on your business versus trying to fix these small problems that keep, keep coming up. So uh, of course, what's important for a small business starting out? We wanna make sure we're continuing to find, win, and keep customers and continue to develop the product, not focus on developing internal technology. 
So the App Exchange plays a really important part in the SMB ecosystem because we can now take functionality that other small businesses are creating and repackage that up for use in other small businesses. So again, we're starting to share these resources, these limited technical resources that a lot of times we don't have as much access to and taking all that, that smart, that good idea and putting it into Salesforce. So some examples of finding customers. If we're gonna take a look at these different types of apps that you might look at for, um, for helping to find customers. Um, one that I believe Mark down here, which I'm gonna introduce you to in just a second, um, just started using a business card reader down here. So instead of, you know, I'm sure how many of you are coming out away with at least like 10 business cards today, right? Um, instead of inputting those in manually, this is an app to help you actually uh, import those in bulk. Um, duplicate checking. Uh, I would definitely, if you haven't already, take a look at some of our Salesforce Labs dashboard packs out there. So pre-built dashboards, completely free. Um, if you don't have that installed, at least, at very least, go out and get those and get started with some dashboards, good marketing dashboards out there as well. In terms of winning customers, there's plenty of apps for that too. Uh, Conga Composer is a really good example of how you can use this to create quotes um, or any document generation. Um, this is a really simple tool to be able to create PowerPoints, PDF documents um, out of Salesforce data, um, and plenty of other full CPQ out there as well. We also have a deal maker by the Taz Group to help do deal strategy. And of course, you've heard a lot about email integration and e-signature like DocuSign. Those are often uh, very heavily used as well to help automate those processes. And then of course, keeping customers. So there's field service and mapping. I'm gonna show you an example of a mapping application soon. Um, customer surveys out there, uh, project management, and of course, like we mentioned earlier, phone systems as well. Um, and then there's also things that are just helping to grow your business generally. So there's those processes that uh, you, you don't really think of when you think of Salesforce or CRM, um, but there's, they're definitely needed. So for example, how do we check in visitors at the front desk? There's an app for that. You can go out there, download the Salesforce Visitor One application, and it's actually built a mobile application for the front desk person to check in to see who's here and notify people right away. But managing volunteers. Of course, something that we do very heavily uh, at Salesforce. And then um, even our agile development tool. So if there's any software developers out here uh, that you guys develop software as a product, this is actually what we use to develop and track our, uh, our, our roadmap in Salesforce. And then employee intranet, like I mentioned earlier. So let's go ahead and um, take a quick jump over to the app exchange and, and see what this is all about and how you can help find some of these apps. So, there's over 2,800 of them, of them out there, so it's always kind of uh, difficult getting going, right? Like, where do we start? So what I want you to do um, out here is go to appexchange.com, and this is where you'll be able to see all of the apps that we're talking about. If you're new to the App Exchange, you can start learning a little bit more about it up here. But let's go ahead and let's say that we're looking for a mapping application, because uh, we want to start getting more efficient with how we're finding leads and uh, how we're planning our trip. So, what we might do is go ahead into the top right hand and type map. And um, then uh, as well up here, we'll use some of these filters. So let's say that you know specifically, um, I wanna start looking at anything that's mobile in Salesforce One enabled, so I'll go ahead and choose that. Uh, we are on professional edition, so I'm gonna also see what apps work with professional edition because there are, there are edition specific apps. And then um, there's plenty of ratings that go around on these apps too. So let's say we only wanna take a look at apps that have four stars and up. And then we'll go ahead and hit apply. And you can see that as we do that, there's a whole list of apps that come back for us um, with more specific to the criteria that we're asking. And we can see one in particular, GeoPoint, has 342 ratings, 324 ratings down here. And it's something that we may wanna explore further. So as you click into there, um, it's gonna give you more detailed uh, information like uh, what it's about, there'll be screenshots in here, um, you can see at the top that it's designated for Salesforce One Mobile, and it's not using any limits within the org. So as you, as you install certain types of apps, they may not uh, re use any of your tab or object limits. Um, you can also see that this one happens to be paid, and uh, if we wanna do a little bit more research on the reviews, we can hop into here and see more information around the, what, what other customers have said about this app. Finally, when we're ready to install that, the best part about this is you just have to click get it now, and it's gonna walk you through a click wizard to get this set up in your org. So what would normally be you know, weeks, if not months, of developing a mapping application for this, 
within Salesforce. You can now do it with just about, what, five or six clicks to, to get it installed here, and this will walk you through how to do that. But now let's uh, take a look over, and uh, I, I'm moving over into an org where we've actually installed GeoPoint running, and I'm gonna show you specifically what that looks like. So GeoPoint is, like we mentioned earlier, a native application. So uh, what that means is it's built into Salesforce One. It's built using all of the dashboards and reporting features and workflow features. So all I have to do to get to it is open up my mobile device, come down to this map here that we just installed into Salesforce, and now you will be able to see all of our Salesforce data mapped. So let's say I'm a sales rep out on the road and I wanna take a look at um, all of my nearby customers because I have a little bit of extra time. What I'll do is go ahead and click this magnifying glass choose that I want to map my accounts, and then using GeoPoint, it's gonna pull back all of that Salesforce data straight into here. And then, of course, we could do things like start adding these to routes to get the most optimum route between these uh, accounts. And that's an example of how one of these apps is, uh, is, is built straight in here. We installed it, and of course, able to, um, to start mapping our data or help fix a process. But there's plenty of other types of processes beyond just mapping. So what I want to do now is um, introduce um, World Waterworks here, um, and specifically Mark Pisagi, who is, the, um, who is uh, one, of our, one of our customers. He's actually the CEO for World Waterworks. <coughs> and he's going to talk a little bit about, um, first of all, what the company is. Uh, Mark, I'd love to hear if, if you could introduce yourself for us a little bit and tell us a little bit more about the company. Yeah, good afternoon, um, or good morning, I guess. Uh, Mark Visagi, we're all the Waterworks. I'm the CEO and founder. I'm an environmental engineer. Um, how many here uh, love Salesforce? It's incredible stuff, right? How many here drink water? Everybody should raise their hand for both of those. <laughs> <coughs> So would you guys be surprised to hear that 80% of all sickness and disease worldwide is related to contaminated water? Can everybody hear me okay? 50% of all the world's hospital beds are occupied by people with an easily preventable waterborne illness. 60% of US lakes are too dangerous for swimming or drinking. That's shocking, right? Water is our most precious resource and it needs protecting. World Water Works started 16 years ago with the purpose to clean up our dirty water. We didn't know exactly how we were gonna do it, um, but we knew two things. One, we wanted to constantly innovate, and two, we wanted to stand behind our promise no matter what. Today, we're nearly 100 people strong, We've won, I've been on the Inc. 5000 list for the last three years as one of the fastest growing companies. Uh, and our technology takes poop to products. Your poop is our product. <clears throat> so, um, let's see, I lost my thought for a second. So in the early days, there were only a few of us and, and communication was pretty easy. Um, as we grew, uh, we started getting uh, needs for CRM. Uh, so in 2001, we explored CRM. We knew that sales, we knew Salesforce was out there, but we weren't ready to take uh, on the burden of the cost. So we went to a different CRM system and failed miserably. Then we went to a different CRM system and failed miserably. By, by 2003, we were all in on Salesforce. 2004, I came to Dreamforce. And it was a lot different back then, but I was just blown away. And I went home uh, with about a dozen apps. I just loved the app store and was giddy about all the apps. We implemented a bunch of them, and, and they helped our process, helped us grow. Everything was great. By 2010, we recognized that we had uh, scalability issues, that we weren't the most scalable company. We, we weren't uh, communicating well. One of our particular problems was uh, taking a complex sales process, winning the deal, and then handing it over to fulfillment. And that communication gap was difficult. So we decided that it was time to go all in with Salesforce. So all in, we have 
not just CRM, not just ERP, but finance and everything. Our whole company runs on the force.com platform, and we use apps to do that. Um, let's see, I lost my train of thought again, guys. So uh, today we uh, are just uh, blown away with where we've come. We've created efficiencies, quality, um, We've changed a process that took weeks down to hours by using these uh, technology in Salesforce. So I'm going to introduce you to my colleague and friend, John Graff, who's our business process automation director, and he's going to give you some of the details. Thank you. All right. My mic's on, but I usually talk pretty loud. I just have to slam my door in my office all the time because I'm a little bit too loud. Is that the problem? Yep. <laughs> okay, that's an end user problem. <laughs> yeah. Okay, is that better? Awesome. All right, you're going to have to excuse me. I have to take notes. There's a lot of points I want to get to. Um, because Salesforce is my baby. I'm, uh, I'm the, uh, as Mark said, Director of Business Process Automation, um, but that all started off with me being the uh, system administrator for, for Salesforce. Um, we, we needed one. It's, it's key for us, whatever we're doing, whenever we're trying to run the system, make sure we're putting things in place. You just don't want to slap something into your business. I mean, if you did that, you wouldn't be in business in the first place, right? Okay, excuse me. Um, so whenever I see this timeline right here. All right, this is the story of a hashtag awesome admin. Uh, Salesforce loves their admins. They've got a whole floor dedicated to them on Moscone West. Second floor, you're going to find out everything you're going to need to know to put everything into your system and run it properly. That's where, actually where all the fun is, too. Okay. It's, uh, it's exciting. All right, so now how many of you guys here uh, are the execs in your company and the admin in your company? Okay. All right. Now, uh, now, how many have no designated admin whatsoever? Yeah? Okay. Not that many hands. That's, that's good. That's good because, like I said, you need to have somebody out there to not only just install this, but it's more than just turning a switch on. You also have to make sure it connects to all the parts that you like, and then you also have to train your end users on how to use it because if they're not using it, it's not really worth anything to you. I want you to keep that in mind as we're going through today. The other thing is you know, the pace of progress before and after we had an admin within the system. Right? Um, from 2004, my chart starts on 2010 because... We never really implemented anything that stuck, and these are the reasons why. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so, like, as Mark mentioned in 2011, um, it was time for us to bring every department onto the platform. We wanted to be able to report anywhere, <clears throat> anywhere in the world to our executives so they can make timely business decisions. And if they're all in one place, they can see all that data in one place. This is, uh, we decided Salesforce is the best option for something like that. Um, and they obviously prove that they can, can do it, right? First two areas that we looked into were inventory and accounting, money in, money out, most important things in a business, right? So they became two huge impacts, and we started by uh, managing, at one point, uh, QuickBooks is how we're handling all of our finances, and inventory uh, for a manufacturing company, this is awesome, it was done on an Excel spreadsheet and the eidetic memory of our engineer, um, you, you got to do something better than that, right? You can't report on, on what Praveen was thinking that week. Um, but, you know, still amazing. Uh, and this is when Accounting Seed came onto the scene, all right? They came on as implementation partners for their financial suite, and they also brought us to Ascent, and they were helping us get up to speed on, on that. Now, um, I was in purchasing at the time when they hired me on, and I just kind of stumbled into Salesforce and found it there and realized we weren't using it to its full capability, and I started looking into more and more how we can do it and how we can get it running, and that's how I kind of got tapped to help them implement, sell uh, Ascent, work on inventory, build it from the ground up. Like I said, we didn't have anything from before. Um, and uh, it was actually Caroline Beetson at Accounting Seed 
amazing help and very good advice that she gave me. She said, she started to tell me that you can put everything on the platform, not just whatever we got from off the app exchange. You can either pull it down or you can build it yourself. And, uh, and uh, you know, it, it took me a while to learn, but three years, four years later now, we were able to, to put everything out there. It was fantastic advice and, and it really turned my life around. Um, now, with the help of Accounting Seed, uh, we initiated inventory control system on Ascent, and I burned all the old inventory spreadsheets, metaphorically. You can't really burn an Excel file. But uh, there was a lot of work to put in place, um, especially when there was no system really there in the first place, um, plus the learning curve to learn everything I could about Salesforce. It took me a year to, to get myself certified, which was a huge help, and then learn everything that you could do and then make the connection so you don't have to call up consultant every time you want to change a layout or a field, right? So this is definitely the longest implementation that we had within um, any of our, our apps that we've installed. It was really about, um, about a year and a half before I felt it was fully implemented to get everything set in place, put everything put out there. And uh, it allowed us to understand in the end, though, the cost of materials that we consumed, the value of stock that was on our shelves at the time, and it was the ability to track goods in and out as we're coming. You need to know what's always on your shelves, right? Now, uh, Accounting Seed, on the other hand, uh, does uh, all the things you'd expect from an accounting app, right? Uh, what AP, billings, cash disbursements, forecasts, everything you need. It's all right in there, one package. It got us up and running. And it was in the middle of 2011 that uh, we decided to run both of them concurrently. That's QuickBooks and Accounting Seed. Just because we, we want to test the water. Stick your toe in the water, right? And uh, by the end of 2011, our accounting department was really happy to stop doing the double entry because they, they realized that they're just wasting their time. They put it once into Accounting Seed, and then they go to QuickBooks and add things two or three times because it didn't have the automation or the customization that you have with the Salesforce apps. It, it was fantastic. Um, so I had actually very little to do with the implementation on that one. Uh, credit goes to Accounting Seed and two brilliant women in our, in our accounting department. They, they did a fantastic job there. Um, now, one of the other apps that was introduced to us by Accounting Seed was Conga. All right. Now, have you guys got Conga in your orgs yet? Yes. Somebody always says it's great, because it, it is. It's fantastic. Uh, you need to go see them at their booth. They're the guys in the Hawaiian shirts. They're happy, happy people. Uh, they're, uh, they uh, have the most comprehensive document merge package I've ever seen. And uh, they even have, like, a Conga U. You can go to their website and learn even more about how to build up amazing merge documents. Um, Really, really fantastic stuff. Uh, we use it for billings, order confirmations, packing slips, purchase orders, non-conformance reports, and uh, our personal masterpiece. Mark and I have been working on this one for a while. Our sales proposal is a 17 to 30 page uh, document that's dynamically composed based off of the data that you're going to find in an opportunity, the child project object, and the grandchild project task objects, which could lead up to uh, 100 to 180 in our particular situations usually. It compiles all that data and then puts out a beautiful sales document based off exactly what it is we're proposing every key point within our scope of supply. So go talk to them. You need it in your system. Um, it's, uh, it's a must. All right. Um, now, the next couple of years, we slow down on a few implementations. This is when I really start to focus on my training and learning how to use Salesforce and use, learning how to put it together as well as I can. And uh, we just do a couple small apps. Mostly, I'm, now I'm testing the water as an admin, right? Um, one of the ones I was a big fan of, the first one that somebody told me about was Salesforce Labs. All right, uh, These are free and open source apps that you can put into your system. I'm going to say that again, free and open source, which means you can make any changes to them that you want, okay? Uh, they're, they're fantastic. Uh, some good examples that we have that I have up here, the blood donation manager is an interesting one uh, if you plan to do something interesting with your team, right? Uh, but lead convert chatter, milestones PM, case age and business hours, survey force is a great one, mass delete, mass update, and mass, uh, mass edit. Those, you know, it's, it's, you're worried about how to do this with just... Download it into the system, put the button over. You got to read the documentation, though. I mean, that's that's one of the key things about it. Um, but uh, oh, we have all these, but they also have dashboards. 
tons and tons of dashboards. Uh, if you just want to get quick reporting ideas, you can load them in and immediately go and see how it works out, customize those reports to how you need them. It's fantastic. I love them. Uh, the trick to these, though, is that there is no direct support for these particular apps. Um, whereas if I'm having a problem, I can call up, uh, I can call up uh, Accounting Seed or Ascent or Conga, and they can solve any problems I'm having. You don't really have anybody you can call on any of the Salesforce labs. But like I say, they're very basic and simple. And if you are having a problem with them, go to the success community and ask any one of the people out there like me who troll around and answer people's questions and offer help to whoever we can. That's where you're going to get a lot of your best answers anyway. Go to the success community first, I always say. Um, so just don't download and, and think that it's going to automatically work. You've got to read the instructions. Um, you know, that should be a common sense thing, right? Anyway, uh, now, remember when I talked about pace earlier? Um, things start to run faster in 2013 um, because my knowledge have gotten a little bit better. We've gotten a little bit faster and more uh, cohesive on how we're running our system, how we're managing our change management and documenting everything as we're moving forward. The, uh, other aspect was that uh, Mark and I had agreed that it was time that you know I focus on being the admin, being the business process uh, uh, automation director here, so I can focus on putting the whole company onto the cloud, take those little nooks and crannies that were missing and start adding them in. So things started going faster because now I'm focused on it 100% of my time. Um, all right. Um, we had Dupe Catcher, which is a, a really good one here. Uh, solves a common problem that everybody has on a platform. It's fairly basic. There's some out-of-the-box stuff in Salesforce right now, but this one was great because I put it in, uh, what does it say here, 2014. It took me one day to install it, and it sends out notifications to me anytime somebody tries to enter in another duplicate. Of course, they also get a block warning as well. And like I say, installed it in one day, it was done. I didn't have to deal with it anymore, and our duplicates have drastically dropped. Um, the other one being Ava Tax by Ava Lara. Um, now I'm a step ahead. I'm sorry about that. Uh, let me see if I can go back. There we go. AvaTax, um, this one's really simple, too. This didn't even take me a day. It took me more of an hour. I installed it, and it calculates all of the tax uh, that we need for any state, no matter what it is, based off of the invoices in our system. Automatic. It's a super easy, fun, fun app. Okay. Now I'm going to get to the one that really changed our world here. Um, I, I have my engineer over here. He's the one who really helped me build up some of the amazing toys that I can do with XAuthor from Excel, uh, for Excel, from, from Aptis. Uh, if you get a chance, they've got a booth out there dedicated just to this, this app, um, and it's, it's really amazing. Um, so the key point, though, if you think about it, all those other apps I discussed, the exception of Conga, was that they solved a specific business problem, a basic business need. But XAuthor, we've been able to solve a very big issue, but then you can go off and solve any other time that you need. Any time you say, I can do this in Excel so much easier, well, now you can do it in Excel and have it done in Salesforce almost at the exact same time. Here's how, how it works. It uh, takes the data from Salesforce, pulls it down into an Excel spreadsheet that you've designed, allows you to manipulate the data, allows the user to manipulate, manipulate the data you allow them to do, all right? And then it pushes that data right back up into Salesforce for you, all right? Um, so let me uh, give you two good examples of how we use this. The first one was, uh, this is a common problem everybody has. It's Maybe an exaggerated story, but like I say, you've all heard this before. Uh, we've had a uh, uh, old school sales guy. He's always done things his way, and that's how he sells. And he sells. That's why he's in this business for as long as he has, because he's that good. So we just want to make things as easy and comfortable for him as possible. He's got a spreadsheet. He handles all of his opportunities on his spreadsheet. There's no need for him to go and put data into Salesforce. It's a waste of his time, and it's a waste of everybody else's time, too. So we took his spreadsheet. We connected it through XAuthor directly into Salesforce. And then, then we told him, don't even bother with Salesforce. You're absolutely right. <laughs> we don't need you to go in there anymore. And he goes and enters everything into Excel and uh, hits save goes right back into Salesforce. He doesn't know any better, but he, we have the data that we need from him. So that one's great. Matter of fact, they started putting together little apps for you. Uh, it's a pipeline manager, I believe they refer to it as. So whenever you uh, get X author, it's one of the first things they're going to say, oh, well, here's one that you can immediately put in and get going right away. 
really fun toy. But uh, the real reason we got XAuthor in the first place was min Mark mentioned our complex sales process. Um, you know, we handle a large amount of data uh, that tells us exactly what we need to propose to them, what equipment's going to work so that we can get them the cleanest water that we can get them at the most efficient price, right? So um, we had a really complex Excel spreadsheet that we've always used uh, for some time that would take all the data that you'd put in and then it would kind of tell you what models that you would need to go through. And then you'd take those models that, they, that they'd give you and you would hand key them into those grandchild uh, uh, records, I was telling you about the opportunity, and enter in each one, which could be up to, like I said, up to 100, 180 in some larger cases. So obviously very cumbersome, very, very difficult to train people on and user adoption was obviously in the sink. We couldn't get them to do this unless they absolutely knew that they must. And then they grumped about it the whole time. That's a classic sales guy for you, right? So um, <clears throat> this app took all the, uh, uh, XAuthor took all the data from the opportunity and we produced a list of models and entered it into the appropriate records all in one fell swoop. Um, and, and in reality, some of our sales guys who are not as technologically advanced or, or knowledgeable about, about our process, would, they didn't need to be anymore because they can hit a button and it would do all the calculations for them and then push all the data right back up. It was, it was, a, it was a huge win for us uh, once we got that finally up and running. Um, the generation for sales proposals plus Conga being able to put all that together as quickly as it did shrank from hours to like minutes. For, for many of our cases. Many of our cases, it just saves so much time. And then they can go out there and start doing more proposals faster, faster, faster. All right, so um, um, the other key point about this was uh, the data that we put in. You are allowed 500 custom fields on an opportunity. Right now, we're using 465 of them. And out of those 465, we added 175 new fields based off of this spreadsheet. So it takes this data and calculates like you would in Excel and then pushes it right back in. And now we're tracking 175 more points of data that we were never tracking before. Um, so it removed all the human error out of the calculation. It's keeping that data. And now we can go back and see uh, the error to solids ratio and how it's gotten better throughout the years. Uh, well, months since we were only on this for about a year now, but it's going to be in the future. Ten years, we can look back and see historically how we've done and now that we've pushed our data through. Um, so that plus a couple of homebrewed customizations, uh, and we've got the entire company on the platform. Uh, it's, uh, it really changed everything that we did and however we're, we're working everything together. And as long as we're going to find solutions out there on the App Exchange, uh, it's going. We're going to keep on adding them on. Actually, uh, Concur is when we're implementing this week. Um, Mark and John and I are getting the opportunity to first use Concur to track all of our expenses, and they go directly into our general ledger, so we don't have to sit spend hours typing them in at the end of the month. Really fantastic, fun tool. Um, so. Uh, that's uh, that's really the history I have right now. It's going to keep on going on. I'm going to keep on growing. But uh, I wanted you to remember, though, it, it takes a really dedicated admin to make all of this happen. So if you want to run your whole platform on, the, on it, you just can't go shopping one day and put 18 apps in your org. You've got to really focus on how to do it, how to implement it, and get your users up and running. Um, thank you. Yeah, so John made it... So John's uh, was awesome. He made it uh, sound a little complicated. I, uh, as Justin said, I went. I was in Korea, and I had a, about uh, 50 business cards that I needed to get in. And I went and looked on the App Exchange, found uh, e-cards, downloaded that, put it on. Without uh, his advice, it was after hours, but uh, it was very simple and easy. And I got uh, all those cards entered when I had some spare time. So. It depends upon the app, but some are some are very easy and some are much more complex. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, we got it though; it's implemented now. Awesome. So we're going to transition to a bit of Q and A here, and I have some questions that I'm going to ask. And I'd ask um, as we're doing this if you guys could also come up with some some examples or some questions that you have. 
So um, one of the one of the reasons we asked uh, both Mark and John to speak here is they've been they've been customers for a really long time of Salesforce. They've installed over forty. They've had over forty installs in their org since they've been a customer. Um, not all of those currently active, but um, I am curious to know with all the apps that you have and have tried, where do you even start? There's 2,800 apps out there. Uh, what, what, what type of criteria do you typically look at uh, to find an app that's good, or to, where do you even start? Sure. Um, the, the easy answer is uh, you, know, you can see the reviews on the apps and how many stars it has, uh, but the best way to go out there is, is ask people in the success community. How did you do? Which one did you use to solve this problem? And I'll usually get two or three good good uh, uh, suggestions, and I'll work off of that. Yeah, and and actually, just getting on the app, app exchange and exploring, I found that uh, if I don't have a, even a particular problem, uh, I might explore that, and I find uh, solutions that it starts me thinking about uh, the business in a different way to make it more efficient. So it's a uh, uh, just exploring, but the reviews are what's most uh, important for me. And um, there's a lot of other scaling businesses and people that are growing fast. You guys have grown quite a bit since uh, becoming a customer, what, like 10 years ago, I think you guys started. Um, can you talk just a little about what advice would you give to any other, anyone else out here that's growing just as fast and are thinking about using the App Exchange to help do that? Use the force. <laughs> Use the force. We have a badge that we give out to people when we show user adoption. Somebody's showing dedication, putting things out there. We put a, give them a little badge to acknowledge the fact that you're, you're out there, a, a new fun work.com toy. I like that one. <laughs> but try some stuff out, experiment, and uh, the other thing that we uh, have learned is use the sandbox um, to test things. Uh, we started uh, way back when not using the sandbox, not knowing what it was, and uh, started doing things to ourselves that we didn't know what we were doing. So sandbox uh, <laughs> is a really uh, smart uh, and useful tool. Yes, uh, I'm 100% on that. We've got about uh, we've got a couple of minutes for some questions from the audience. Um, does anybody have any questions? I can walk around with the microphone. Yep. Sorry. Uh, any questions? Yeah. He's running all the way up there. Yeah. <laughs> Getting my <laughs> exercise. Your exercise. Step, step meter. Yeah. I've done a lot of searching in the App Store for various things, and it seems like, I don't know if this is just unlucky on my part, but it seems like I find a, a huge number of apps with very low reviews, like maybe one, two, or three reviews. And a lot of times I'll judge an app based on that and maybe pass over it, thinking that you know it hasn't re been really vetted. Um, have you found that maybe that's not a, a good a good way to judge something, or are there apps you found? That... It's, it's um, one way to judge on them. One thing I have noticed, and I've talked to other uh, admins out there, a lot of people will do those force.com free apps and load them in, but then they're going to get horrible. Somebody's going to give it a horrible review because there is no support and they don't know what to do, or uh, they didn't read the directions on how to actually install it properly. So those end up getting a lot of bad reviews. Um, so I would give them a second chance. But um, if if you're not still not sure, like I said, jump out to that community. There is uh, like the button click admin group or any uh, group that says the word admin in it. You go and ask them. You're going to get a lot of good people giving you good advice. The, the other thing, uh, in general, we like uh, native apps um, more. We prefer native apps. They seem to be uh, much easier to implement, much easier to customize. Uh, so in general, we, we like the native apps better. Yeah. Maybe one more question. Yep. Uh, how does it add to the governor limits? I mean, uh, when you install too many apps, the core percentage and the fields that you end up adding, how do you um, handle that? There's, uh, you get a little bit less restrictions on managed package apps when they come in. Uh, I think you're only allotted maybe a, a certain amount of custom objects or custom tabs. We haven't hit those limits yet because with the managed packages, it, those don't go against you. Um, and then I haven't had any code coverage issues on anything that, I, that I've installed. 
The, the other thing is, uh, you know, you may have seen uh, some of our passion for this, but we get a little uh, overexcited sometimes and, and uh, try to do too much too fast. So we would advise, and we try this, it's hard for us, but we, we try to really do this stepwise and really plan and, you know, just go out there and do one app at a time and, and look at the app make sure it works and, and get it involved, even if it's a simple one, but uh, until you really understand it and, and get going better with it. Uh, but, you know, we, uh, we're pretty aggressive. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of tough because we have our foot on the gas and the brake at the same time. All right. Um, so we are at time. Um, I just I did want to invite you guys. We, we have plenty of app exchange um, uh, around, the, around the rest of uh, Salesforce, of Dreamforce here, so please take a stop. By use the hashtag #getapphappy for anything around um, App Exchange on Twitter, and then also uh, make sure to hit up the small and medium business keynote that is uh, tomorrow at 2 p.m. over at Moscone West. Uh, it's a huge event. If you're a small business uh, or even or small or medium business, I would absolutely recommend coming and see some of our speakers, um, and also check out our small business zone. There is also um, contests available if you can go ahead and submit feedback um, to win a GoPro. And lastly, XAuthor is here. Um, we did talk a lot about them today. So um, they wanted us to invite you to their booth as well. Um, so they're over there um, as also. So any other questions, um, please, we're going to be down here for a little bit as well if you have more questions. Um, we also put a link together for you to take a look and download some of the apps that we talked about today using that bit.ly right here, right there. So we'll keep that up as you guys are, are exiting today. Um, and also we can be reached on Twitter um, afterwards as well. Uh, we put those, uh, that contact information right here. So thank you everyone for attending. Uh, again, if you have questions, we also have these, uh, some of these cool small medium business pins and some app exchange pins as well if you'd like to come down and get some to put on your lanyard. Um, but again, thank you for, for coming today. Thank, thank you. you. Enjoy the rest of Dreamforce.